So in our last set of notes, we finished up talking about the layers and the structures that make up the eye. So before we gonna, uh, go into vision and how um, we actually detect what we see, um, this is something that an ophthalmologist is going to use um, or what they see um, with an ophthalmoscope uh, to looking at the posterior wall of the retina. Um, this picture in the middle uh, has it label, labeled. You can see the fovea centralis, remember, which is going to be the area that's only made up of cones. Um, you can see the macula back there, the blood vessels um, lining throughout the retina, uh, the optic disc, remember, which is your blind spot, and then um, obviously the whole area you're looking at to your retina. Um, Whenever they look at this, they can actually detect um, whether people have diabetes, arteriosclerosis, um, or even degeneration of the optic nerve or the retina. So the image over here on the left is going to be a healthy retina, and the image over here on the right is going to be how they can actually diagnose whether someone has uh, diabetes. When people get diabetes, they can actually get hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging of the blood vessels and then it'll cause the retina to look like this. All right, so how we actually um, get light and make images um, and are able to process it. So light must be focused to a point on the retina for optimal vision. Um, if it is not exactly focused on the retina, then you are not gonna have um, perfect vision. So naturally, our eye is set for distance vision, so things that are more than 20 feet away. And if something is closer than 20 feet away, when we try and focus in on it, our lens actually has to uh, change shape um, and become a little bit thicker. And it's going to do that with the help of uh, the ciliary, ciliary muscles that are gonna be in the ciliary body right there. So this top picture, you're looking at light coming um, through the cornea and the pupil um, and traveling. So the light's gonna be refracted, so it's gonna be bent. Um, so that way it comes to a focal point somewhere on the retina. Um, if you're trying to focus on something that's closer, then as you can see, the lens has to change shape and we do call that accommodation in order to make sure it focuses right here on the retina. If it doesn't change shape enough, then the focal point isn't gonna land on the retina and it's not gonna um, appear sharp. When um, the light is focused onto the retina, it's projecting a real image. And a real image is not gonna be something that is right side up. It's actually gonna be reversed from left to right. So if you're looking at a J, the letter J, um, the image that actually is going to be projected onto your retina because of the refraction of the light as it travels through the lens, you're actually going, it's going to be reversed from left to right, upside down, and of course a lot smaller than the object. So what's crazy is that our brain back there in um, the area of the cortex and the occipital lobe where we, pro lobe where we process our vision, it's actually going to automatically correct so it knows that the image that's being projected on the retina is upside down, that it's reversed, and that it's smaller. So when you process it, what you are seeing, in quotation marks, will appear to be upright, the correct size proportions, and in the uh, correct direction. So uh, the optic chiasma is where we have, so we have the optic nerves that are going to take the impulses from the eyes to your brain. The optic chiasma is going to be an area where some of the optic nerves cross. So you'll have some of the optic nerves from the right side, from the right eye, and some of the optic nerves from the left eye that will cross over this area to go to op opposing sides of the brain. And the optic tracks uh, remember, tract is going to be a bundle of nerve processes or neuron processes that are located in your central nervous system. So here we have um, our right eye and um, our 
field of view right there. We have our left eye and our field of view. And so you'll see that some of the nerves will cross over that optic chiasma. And it is the accumulation of both fields of view that allow for good depth perception and um, allow you to process everything that you see as one image instead of two separate images since we have two eyes. Uh, so within our eyes, uh, we do have internal muscles that are going to help um, change the amount of light that's let in. It is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. So we cannot make our pupils dilate or constrict just by thinking about it. It's going to be an automatic response. So if there's more light, the pupils will constrict, so they will get smaller. And um, on the next slide, I'll show you um, the different types of muscles that actually how they work in order to change the shape. Um, and of course, when we're viewing closer objects, um, our lens has to accommodate. Um, the external eye muscles control eye movement to follow objects, and uh, viewing close objects causes convergence, so your eyes will move medially. Normally, if you're looking to the right, both eyes look to the right. So, But if you are trying to focus on uh, something that lands on your nose, then um, your eyes will converge and both look towards the center. So here it's showing the eye reflexes. Um, this is going to be in like normal lighting, what your eye would look like. Um, uh, parasympathetic stimulation, remember parasympathetic is like your rest and repose stage. So obviously you're not concerned about having very accurate vision, so your um, pupils will be a little more relaxed, uh, or not your pupils, but the muscles that in your iris um, are going to be a little more relaxed, therefore causing the pupil to shrink in size. And then um, the sympathetic nervous system, remember your fight or flight response, you're going to want the best vision, the most accurate vision possible, very detailed vision, so your pupils will actually dilate. Um, so these muscles will constrict, and these muscles will constrict, causing the pupil to open up more and allow more light in. All right, this is showing pupillary dilation and constriction in both humans and um, in a cat. So obviously, if you shine light onto your eyeball, it will cause your pupil to constrict to adjust for the amount of light. Um, if you've been to an ophthalmologist or even just an optometrist, um, sometimes they can, um, they'll actually dilate your eyes in order to be able to get a, a, a good view of the retinal walls. And then, of course, cats are going to have the same response, except the shape of their pupil is different. So you can see this cat in bright light, pupils are very constricted. And then um, in the dark, now they had just flashed this, so the pupils didn't actually have enough time um, to constrict all the way uh, before the picture was taken. And um, so this is why sometimes it takes a little while for your eyes to adjust. So when you first turn the lights off, it doesn't look like you can, you don't feel like you can see anything, but then after a few seconds, your eyes will start to adjust. So the pupils are gonna um, adjust to the, um, allow as much light in as possible. Uh, so if you have um, normal vision, like 20-20 vision, you have what's called emetropia, and this is when your um, eye focuses images correctly on the retina. So you can see the focal point is going to be on the retinal wall. If you are nearsighted, that's called myopia, and uh, so distant objects will appear blurry to you, obviously you're nearsighted. And a uh, light from those objects, the reason why they appear blurry is because the focal point of what you're looking at never actually reaches the retina. Um, so this can be caused from an eyeball that is too long. Uh, sometimes it'll be kind of almost football shaped, um, people will say. Um, and therefore, it just, it's just not quite reaching it depending on where the focal point is will determine how blurry things are that are farther away. If you are farsighted, which means you can see things that are better far away and things that are up close are blurry, um, 
that is called hyperopia. And um, pretty much what happens is the focal point of the object is going to be beyond where your retina is. And so this can be caused from an eyeball that is too short or from people who have what is called a lazy lens. So it does not accommodate appropriately. Astigmatism is when um, images appear blurry because for some reason um, the curvature either in the cornea or in your lens are not equal and um, that will cause um, a blurring of objects. So you'll see you don't have one focal point, you have light that is being projected to several focal points. And a couple homeostatic imbalances of the eye. Some people actually are night blind. Um, basically, their rods don't function properly, and so they don't see as well at night. People who are color blind, this is genetic. It's more common in males because it is a sex linked trait. Um, but there are different types of color blindness depending on what type of cone. Remember, there's three types. Whichever one you, you're missing will determine um, what colors appear like. You're not seeing them black and white, just colors are going to look different to someone who's colorblind as to someone who's not colorblind. Cataracts are whenever your lens um, becomes hard and uh, opaque, and this happens to a lot of people as they get older, so your vision becomes hazy and kind of distorted. And glaucoma I talked about a little bit before, it increases pressure of the eye because the aqueous humor in the anterior segment cannot actually drain.